Good evening everybody, it's Marty Smallset here, Fish Tech Pro Staff. And uh, guys, I want to share with you some of my experiences at the Interprovincials at Whitbank Dam and um, how the fish tech charts have actually helped me and helped us in our success. Um, our boat in particular caught a limit on each day, which I don't think a lot of boats were able to do. It was really, really tough conditions. But um, I think part and partial of the success we've had was because of the fish tech charts and um, I've got the Whitbank chart here in my, my Laurence unit. So I just want to run through some stuff and, and, and just explain to you how we approached it and how we use those charts. It's obviously to our advantage and, and not just to find the structure, but how to approach that structure and also then how to actually fish it. Um, a lot of guys will maybe have the chart, but they weren't, well, they won't utilize it as to its full potential. They might find the structure, but they don't position their boats correctly so that they can actually fish that structure. So they might actually be missing it completely. So I'm going to grab the camera, show it onto the finder, here, and just show you how I actually went to obviously find that structure and then how I positioned the boat to actually be able to fish that structure and then obviously have the success. All right, guys, I'm actually going to go out. I want to show you exactly how I got to where we are here and that's where i want to explain to you what i did so basically if you pop your uh, fish tech chart into your laurence unit this particular one is the elite ti2 i believe it's been discontinued and we've got the fs range now right so you go to chart basically click there um just want to go back out of everything um and go to more options and then it goes to charge a uh, chart source so we were fishing in the main lake uh, close to the dam wall on this particular spot so over here you'll have a lot of options you'll have Laurence Nalionix North Ultra HF Mid Ultra HF 2021 Satellite South Ultra HF River and then Ultra HF Main so then just want to show you where we are more or less uh, the dam wall is right up over here okay so we went right to this spot. The reason why we went to this spot is because of these rocks over here. Just have a look. That's a whole big bank of semi-isolated rock. If you look, if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see there's no rock around it. It's got that little patch there. There's slightly scattered rock. And then over here, you've got more rock. So what attracted me to this is because it was isolated, and also because it was in 18 foot of water, um, we had quite a bit of success in 18 foot of water. Now, what we did here was, and this would maybe not work as well in shallower structure, but because it's 18 foot, it's pretty deep um, to help me um, position the boat correctly so that I can actually uh, fish the structure correctly is, have a look at my trail. You see the trail goes there. So what I did was I went to the trolling motor right across the middle of the section of the rocks over there. You can see where the black line crosses that contour there. So I went right across it and there where the black is is obviously where I've anchored my boat right there. And that was, if I remember correctly, because if, if, if you are on the water and, and your boat is there and you actually click there, it will show you down at the bottom there exactly how far you are from that particular cursor where you've pressed so you could obviously then uh, position your boat away from the rocks or away from the structure you are fishing up until a comfortable casting distance um, depending on the depth of course because if it's more shallow you'll obviously try and get uh, further away whereas if it's deeper you can you can get closer to the structure and fish closer to the boat which in this case was perfect because the structure there was in 18 foot and we were sitting in 27 foot, so it's quite a quite a, a steep drop down there. Um, any case, so so with that trail going right across the rock, and then anchor your boat right there. Then I knew the the rock or the structure we were fishing was right behind the boat. What's also nice is the bank is right here, so it's not too far from the bank. So it's easy to to get a landmark and obviously um, try and position yourself with the landmark 
to give you an idea of where that rock is. In this particular case, the rock is quite broad. So if you position the boat there, you can obviously fan cast that whole area there and cover all of this rock. Um, when you get stuck, you know you're on the right areas. Like my father always says, if you don't get stuck, you're not fishing in the right areas. Um, what also made this area nice is, and we caught quite a bit of fish there, um, we could go deeper and go and target that rock over there in 33 foot of water. Now, these rocks aren't as um, bunched up as the ones at the back there. Um, these are a bit more scattered. You'll see we, we um, positioned our boat, boat a bit closer and then we fished it to the side as well. And we got fish there as well. Um, in practice, we, we got quite a bit, bit of fish there. I um, almost want to say shot for shot. And then on the actual competitions, competition day, um, the fish weren't as in abundance as on the practice day. That's obviously usually how it happens, doesn't it? Anyways, um, that's just what I wanted to explain to you, how I actually position the boat to make sure I don't go and lie there and then fish there because I'm off the line. If you go across that structure, and, and like I said, it's not always possible, especially if it's shallow water, you can't really cross the structure there, but if it's deep, it's nice, so you can actually do that, and then position yourself there, and then fan cast over there, and also fish it up and come down. Um, if you go a bit further up, you'll see there's also some rock over here. Um, very, very nice. Also, once again, semi-isolated, uh, because there's quite a gap between... Uh, the rock we were fishing and these over here um, and then also this rock goes a little bit shallower as well you can see it goes right down to 12 and, and 9 foot there which is quite shallow and it was close to the reeds here but there you still got your your rock in your 18 foot range and it goes to 24 and 27 foot you can see where we were positioned there um, on that little black area there and we once again fan casted across there to the rock there and um we caught some of our fish there. Um, just want to share another area with you. Um, towards the dam wall, um, it makes a little, call it a secondary point if you like. You can see there. Okay, so what we did was the wind was howling from the dam wall coming down this side. So we actually positioned our boat just around the corner there in the quiet water, which helped quite a bit. And like you can see, there's a lot of rock there, which we didn't actually target as much on the particular day we were fishing here. But we were casting, let me just zoom out a little bit. From there, we casted across the point into that super, super deep water. Like I see there, it's 51 foot, but I think we ended up casting in about 45. I think we were targeting, now the boat was there, we were fishing around about there. Um, and then we moved the boat there and we, yeah, there it is. There's a 45 mark. Actually, I think that's where we, what am I doing now? That's actually where we got more success over there. Parked the boat over there and um, and we cast there in the 45 foot. Now, 45 foot is quite deep. That's probably about 12, 13 meters. So what we were doing, we were fishing crawls and uh, on a little Texas rig and you would just cast it out there and let it sit for quite a while to get down. Remember, you're also fighting the the wind and call it a current from the water that's coming down that side. So you literally just cast it into that 45 uh, foot of water, let it drop right to the bottom and we literally dragged it across the rock there and we got a lot of success, a lot of fish. Not a lot of big fish, but we, we got enough fish to, to fill our bags every day, which was quite nice. And I think there's so much rock around here. So these spots reload quite a bit because there were some boats that were sitting on this point here and hogging the spots. Because when we were fishing over here, where I've explained to you earlier, um, over there, we could actually see this spot. Now we saw boats come in and go, come in and go, and then the one day it was empty. We went in there and obviously we saw the reason why there were so many boats there, because they caught all their fish. Um, some of the boats also positioned themselves on about the 40, 45 foot of water, and then they targeted the shallow uh, rock over here uh, where we were actually sitting so you could actually fish it both ways and I actually saw two boats actually doing it that way probably from the same team um, anyway so that that's what we did there uh, close to the dam wall side um, fishing the, the isolated rock and then I want to show you another area last little bit which was quite interesting I just want to get my bearings here now um, I think there's the yacht club it was around yeah okay 
this was a very very popular um we'll call it point slash bank a lot of the boats were sitting um, in and around this bank over here there's a lot of reeds there and then also off the reeds um in i would say it was about 20 foot of water there was some um, I think it was chikamba weed or, or some sort of water grass, but also isolated islands of them, and the guys were catching fish there. It was not so much about the, the grass and the weed, but what was below the grass and the weed, and it's the rock over there. Um, so now a lot of the guys, even ourselves, we positioned our boat around about there, and we fished here towards the, um, the reeds on the bank there, and we got quite a bit of fish there. But also, as the day progressed and the fish obviously moved up and down, there you can see there's a lot of rock here. Um, it gets quite a bit deeper, although we did catch fish in 45 foot, but it's obviously, if, if you can catch them in 24 and 18 foot, it's, it's obviously much easier and faster. But the, the crucial part here was the rock that was combined with the vegetation. Um, yes, there were some vegetation patches over here as well. Yes, I did keep some fish. But the prominent, uh, dominant areas were the rocky areas. And um, I just want to have a look here. I think it was quite a far stretch down. But me and Umpit were fishing the reeds and fishing the reeds and we couldn't. And I think, is it here now? No. And um, the bite just went off and I told Umpit, no, let's, let's just go offshore a little bit and I'll find the trail now. I think it was over here. Uh, yes, there it is. Okay. All right, once again, have a look at all the rock here. Now, this was quite a, and you can see how we moved around here. This is quite a popular spot because you could fish the reeds there right shallow and then have a look at all the rock here at the bottom. That's all rock you are seeing. All those little white dots there is rock and it's it's a huge area um, of rock there. Uh, not so much isolated, so that made it slightly tougher to get the, the actual fish there. Um, I don't want to see exactly where that, I think we've moved past that now. And check this is not there no there it is okay all right now this is we were sitting in about 33 foot of water and then there you can see there's some funny rock going on um, not very prominent um, it's very isolated and it's almost i don't know if it's a shale rock or what's going on there but we were literally parked there for five minutes i threw my shake head in there I think it was one, two, three, fourth or cast or third cast. Got my first fish. Um, and then again on about the seventh or the eighth cast, I got another fish. And um, yeah, it's just, but, but the point I'm trying to make is without these charts, I would not have seen this. I mean, I, if you look at this bank, it, it, it looks pretty barren. I mean, it's got, it's got the, the, the weeds along the side, but if you're not clued up and you don't know how to use your finders without the charts, you wouldn't know these rocks were here. Um, you might pick it up, but not as, as clear as what John's made it here. I mean, these rocks are super clear. You can see there's some isolated rock. You can see slightly bigger, a little bit smaller. Um, you know, and, and on a normal side scan, you'll see this rock, but it's not as clear as this. And um, And like I said, what was nice was, now I'm parked there fishing the rock, fishing the reeds. The fishing is slow. The fishing is slowing down. So now I'm playing with my fish line and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go and check what's going on. And I check deep and I see, but wait, there's some funky rocks going on there. Let's go and try it. And we caught two fish off of it. Um, and again, you can move right up and down this bank here and check where's some rock, where's um, something different, something um, that can attract, attract fish, maybe a drop, maybe... Um, more vegetation or whatever and um and that's exactly what we also did on our scanning day now with interprovincials or like your nationals um it's a set format so on the monday or on the first day you've got your practice days you can actually go and fish and then on your second day which is usually the tuesday you can go and do scanning so no no rods on the boat allowed just go and scan with your fish finders but with john's charts we actually never left our accommodation on tuesday we all sat on our boats and we literally did this. We went up and down the dam and we checked. We And obviously in the practice day, we found fish in 18 foot. So we would stick on that 18 foot contour and move up and down and check. Okay, there, what's that? There's some rock. Yeah, it's not so prominent. There's a little bit. 
you know, and then you can mark it with, with a particular icon that says maybe um, B grade, not, not A grade. A grade would be like something really phenomenal like there. We've got A grade rock there. Slightly deeper, but it's all right. 25 to 30 foot is fine. The fish were there. Now that's nice and big area. It's nice, um, a prominent rock. I would grade that as an A grade rock and that's definitely a spot to, to go to. And literally go right around the dam there in 18 foot and try and find those rock, isolated rock, um, and then mark them. And then when it comes to your, your competition days or your actual fishing days, it's easier to just go to those points and without having to look for them. Have a look at this. Now this is something phenomenal. Where is this? Okay, that was in that one bay there. Um, but just have a look at all that rock and it's all 18 foot, 15 foot. Um, now I can just see myself positioned there and literally fan cast right around me and you'll catch the fish without a doubt. Anyways guys, I hope that helped a bit. Um, I know these charts have helped us a great lot. Um, and like I've mentioned, I mean, there weren't too many boats that caught limit on, on each day. Um, me and them picked it and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's because of these charts that really, really helped us to, to find those, uh, isolated rocky areas and get those fish off of them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's undoubtedly an advantage. Um, we've got nationals coming up at clan now and I've got the clan chart and, and I can literally do what I'm doing here now, sitting in Pongola, scanning the dam, look for structure, look for areas where I think the fish will be holding and, um, and yeah, it's in the benefit of having it at your own home and you don't have to go and actually uh, scan the dam on an actual boat. Guys, just last little point I want to mention here. Uh, me and Umpit were like cruising up and down the the dam here and and my, my finder was on the Ultra HF and we were going at probably 50, 60 k's per hour. And so this chart obviously moves quite quite fast and then i actually spotted this rock moving that fast and i made a u-turn i think you can actually see it exactly here. it's actually quite cool i don't see where the trail is where we were coming in but you can obviously see yeah there it is we went past and i made the u-turn and i parked there um because i saw that rock over there i saw on the finder moving quite fast and that was on the the practice day and uh parked over there and made a cast there also pretty deep 33 foot of water and um, I think we caught a fish after the second or third cast already um, Flippy and Verso actually came next to us and they were picking these rocks up on the side scan and I think they were probably positioned around about here somewhere and they were fishing those rocks over there um, Flippy actually told me and I was laughing because he was fishing one of these areas on one of the competition days and one of the locals came past him and actually made a joke and said hey what are you doing you're not supposed to know about this spot so it's obviously a a pretty um good spot but because it's in the middle of the dam almost in the middle there's really nothing going on there if you don't have these charts or a proper finder you wouldn't know what's going on down there um so yeah once again the the charts helped us to find these type of areas and we got our fish off of that so guys, wherever you are going fishing in South Africa, I'm sure John has, has mapped those dams. Um, be sure to get yourself some fish stick charts. Um, use my name as reference to get your additional discount as well. And um, yeah, just makes life easier and it makes you help catch more fish. Not always necessary for competitions, but I mean, if you're fishing socially, I mean, at the end of the day, you still want to go and catch fish. So get the charts, make your life easier and um, get fish in the boat. So I'll see you guys back on the water. Cheers.